Hello, I'm Dave Lutz, author of the best tracks on Guam. I know a little bit about hiking on the island and I want to share that uh, with you. I think right now we're going to be talking about the incredible variety of destinations on this island. And I've got a little summary here in the book that'll help. These include waterfalls, swimming holes, rivers, coastlines, ancient Chamorro villages, historic sites, mountains, cliffs, and caves. These are all awaiting hikers on our island. Of course, to get there, the terrain varies considerably. Primarily northern Guam, you're hiking on a limestone plateau, and particularly these destinations more or less are around the coastline of the island. You're going to find eroded pitted limestone. So make certain you've got your rugged hiking boots on, and I would say long pants and long shirts, and also take along relatively inexpensive gloves because these are sharp rocks you may have to hold on to. And also going through the limestone forest will take some time. So be aware of your trail. A lot of trails are marked by ribbons, some are not. So make certain you again plan your hiking route. Now down south we have other um, aspects of hiking in the rolling hills and mountains. Mostly um, volcanic in origin, a lot of red dirt, but that's where you find the sword grass with the really sharp razor edge. It earns its name as sword grass for that reason. Again, wear those gloves. Don't try and grab the sword grass bare hand and it'll live up to its name. Now also, unfortunately, in the dry season down south, you have fires that are unfortunately intentionally set. And you have to be aware in the fire season of if there are fires in your areas, I just would not go and go to a different location. On the other hand, if a fire comes up, don't panic. Just evaluate the course of the fire and where you'd like to go and make some changes and you'll be safe. Now all around the island is our beaches, quarries, many destinations you can snorkel offshore. But pay attention to the daily weather advisories relative to offshore and if it's hazardous. And even if it's not forecast to be hazardous, those currents, particularly rip currents in cuts in the reef, which are very dangerous. However, if the ocean is completely calm, it's perfectly safe to snorkel. But I snor snorkel with somebody, preferably more than one person, and preferably having a person on the shore. Now you may go into the water and it may be calm and then the waves can come up unexpectedly. So be aware of changing situations. And rip currents are cuts in the reef. The water will come in over the reef and then it seeks its escape back to the ocean through these cuts. And you simply cannot try and swim against the rip current. You'll have to go out into the ocean and then find a reasonably safe place to come back in. And of course, it's always wise to have a flotation device. Now our inland waters, many people like to go to waterfalls and waterfalls are along streams. We have periods of time with rainfalls. In the summer months, you get rain clouds that get very dark and they will just sit over a part of the island and you'll get torrential rainfalls that can raise levels of stream flow up to at least 12 feet in a matter of seconds. You can have a stream that's calm and the next thing you notice is you have a, a flash flood coming down. Be aware of those conditions. Be aware of those very dark clouds. Make certain you know where they're at and don't hike to where those clouds are at. I do know they move. But, and if you run into a situation where the rain starts or if you hear something unusual or if the muddy water suddenly starts coming down the stream, you have to seek escape immediately. 
That doesn't mean necessarily find the trail out you came. Just seek the high ground itself for a safe exit. And uh, we have lost people in these situations. And if you're with people, keep your group together and use your buddy system to pull people out and to safety. Those can be terribly uh, momentarily events that will happen in just a matter of seconds. So coastlines, be aware of the waves and the rip currents and inland particularly the flash floods. Those are probably our, our biggest concerns. Uh, beyond the water, the major concern is going to, the next concern is falls. Watch your terrain. Watch where you're headed. Always wear decent footwear. Take along a hiking stick and don't feel rushed. Hikes should not be a race. Keep track of other people in your group. And if you get to a terrain that requires for you to scramble up or down, just take your time and choose a preferred route. If you're going down, sometimes it's best to squat down. And if you're going up, use all four of your appendages and just move one at a time. And certainly help each other. Many places have ropes. If you're so inclined, take a rope along. But also when you take rope, know how to use the rope. And again, gloves are important to hang on to a rope. I think that basically is, highlights our major concerns relative to some planning, using the maps, using maps with your terrain, and the dangers and the uniqueness of our streams, uh, offshore waters, and that just about does it for this segment.